which side looks better this side or this side I can't hear you this side or this side <laughs> I'm just being silly what you see is what you get <laughs> Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got a lot of fun crafting goodness for you today. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Today we'll be working on a combo of everyday crafts, Valentine and Easter decor. So let's get started with project number one. For this project, I'm going to be using this chunky slat board from Dollar Tree, a 12 inch chunky slat board. I'm going to use a paint stick a long paint stick I'm going to use this that came from Arteza uh, any like piece of wood will do or you could do wood and put your own framing on I'm using the back side because it looks like it's already got a frame on it and then what I'm going to use are some of these they're called tread wheels I picked them up at Hobby Lobby and so what I've already done is I've cut two sticks out of the paint stick at five and three quarter inches long. We're going to place the chunky slat board at the top and then we're going to go over the hardware we're going to use. I've got two bolts and all I did was take those tread wheel things to the um, store and make sure I could just find a couple bolts that fit hardware store. And um, what I'm trying to do here is make this look like a barn door assembly using wood and just a little bit of a couple of bolts. I'm using six washers two nuts that will go over the bolts and then four lug nut covers now you don't have to use washers and you could use just all glue everything together and just use all like these lug nut cover things okay and it was really cheap cost me a couple dollars for all of it all right so what i'm doing i placed the little tread wheels at the top of that chunky slat board and I'm placing the paint sticks in that area and then i'm placing like at the top will be the washer and the nut because it's going to go around the bolt and at the bottom of both sides going to be a washer and like the lug nut cover okay just like that and you want to see a little bit of that tread wheel at the top because you know how barn door assembly hardware looks okay now what i'm doing is i'm going to be wood gluing our little paint sticks here to the top of my little frame and that chunky slat board so i'm just taping here where I don't want to paint okay and I'll do the same thing on the back of the paint sticks I will mark off an area where I don't want paint to be because wood glue sticks better you know raw wood to raw wood okay and also what I did is I just rounded the top I sanded it just the top of those paint sticks you don't have to but I did and then I'm going to take everything out with this rust-oleum uh, flat black spray paint and spray paint it all you can see all my hardware's painted everything, the tread wheels, and I even painted the inside of the um, frame thing there. And then, of course, you saw on the back of those sticks where I didn't paint, okay? Next thing I'm going to do is just take this Waverly Antique Wax. I'm at the bottom of my jar, so I just have a bunch of water in it. It's watered down, and I'm going to just use it like an inexpensive stain and stain around my framing area. Now, if you use something that doesn't have a frame, just a plain piece of wood that's perfectly fine too i just thought this um i'll try to get a link down below for these uh wood pieces from arteza you get like five or six to a pack i think this is the eight by ten size okay and just going to go staining around everywhere but i like these because i often like to use the inside because it looks like it's you know like i said earlier like it's already framed so it makes it nice and easy and then once that's all dried off, I'll go ahead and kind of sand it and distress this a little bit too. And I'm just putting on really lightly because I don't want a really dark stain. All right, so here everything's all sanded. I even sanded the inside and you can see where I've taken the tape off. So first thing I want to do is I want to see where my stick is going to fit on that tread wheel, okay? And I'm going to push the bolt through it so I can press it against the wood and it's going to go through just like that and I'm going to press that bolt against the wood so I know where you can see right there at the top of that wood where I need to drill a hole so I'm going to drill a hole in one of these at the top where that bolt's going to fit through and then I will lay this against the other one perfect so it's matchy matchy and then I'll use that for my uh, template to drill the hole through the other board okay get a start of a drill anyway and then I'll go all the way through perfect all right now we're going to go ahead and assemble our tread wheels through I start it here and then I just kind of finish it off camera but because the bolt's nice and tight it takes me a little bit to <laughs> thread that through my hole here 
And then I'm going to go ahead and add the washer and the lug nut and get it all secured. And we'll set that aside and we'll do the same thing on the other one. Thread that bolt through and the washer and the lug nut. And I'm just adding a little touch up paint there on that bolt because as I thread it through, some of the paint rubbed off. So now I'm bringing in the wood glue and I'm going to wood glue it in sections. What I'm going to do is kind of wood glue this bottom the paint sticks onto this bottom thing first, onto our bottom framing area here. Perfect, and then I will clamp those down for about half an hour. See that process, just some little small hand clamps work great here. And then once that's set up, or while it, what I'll take those clamps off, and then we're gonna go ahead and bring in our, I've got a vinyl quote here. Of course, you know, I'll have a free printable for you. So you can, if you want, print that out on paper if you don't have a cutting machine onto some cardstock, some pretty cardstock, and then glue your cardstock in the center of your picture area, right? Or, of course, if you have a cutting machine, this will be a PNG for you so you can clean out the background, the middles of the letters, and cut it out in vinyl. Okay, get this ready to go. Finish it off. As I pulled it off of this uh Bible scripture area. I realized it was crooked, so off camera I had to straighten it up. Just thought you wanted to know that. <laughs> Drove me nuts. <laughs> anyway, once that is complete, now I'm going to come in and add wood glue on our chunky slat board. And then we're going to go ahead and put this right underneath those paint sticks. And I think we're about, oh, I, I bet I'm about a quarter inch above that framing area. And I've clamped it down with some paper towels so it doesn't scratch anything. You can see that there. And now I'm just adding my washers. I've marked where I want them to be. And I'm adding my washers down. Our little faux screw, you know, bolts and nuts here. Just adding the washer and then adding the lug nut cover will go right on top of that. And using Beacon Fabri-Tac glue here works perfectly wonderful. They are stuck beautifully. I think we did a good job doing faux farmhouse hardware here, if I say so myself. And once I place these on, this project is complete. Let's move on to project number two. For this project, I'm going to use this spindle I got at Local Habitat for Humanity. Any kind of pole would work, a dowel or something. I'm going to use this like little plant hanger I got at a local store. I'm going to use these things from Dollar Tree, this little bamboo cutting board. Really anything would work here. This piece, because I want to kind of double layer it, this little decor piece from Dollar Tree. I'm also going to use this, you know, crafty wood piece from Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to use some of these chunky, wonky hearts, craftingwithkimber.com. I'll have a link down in the description box below for you. Now on my spindle, I've marked like the center and I did that on the bottom of this. It might be kind of hard to see and I will do it on the cutting board as well because I want to screw them in so it kind of looks like this. Now I know we kind of did this project in for a December Christmas project, but I thought let's do a Valentine one as well. I spray painted everything in black and I've got the screws all set. I'll put three screws in the bottom. I've got two screws at the top for the plant hanger. You can see here the screws and all I'll do, I'll do it off camera, of course. Let me remove the tape from this one because I'm going to wood glue the piece on top. So I didn't want to tape here and I'll just line my holes up just like that and, you know, do it together. But first off, I want to get this paper on here that I've cut to fit. And I've also cut paper to fit my little sign and the fronts and backs of my hearts. 
and I cut them all just, you know, about a quarter inch shy all the way around. And these are the other papers that I'm going to be using as well. So what this is what I did here. I'll show you. So on one of my hearts, the smaller hearts, I'm going to, of course, trace that in case we have any new people watching, you know, haven't seen this before. And I just come in and I redraw that perimeter pattern there. Usually it's eighth inch, sometimes a quarter inch, but somewhere in there, I just kind of redraw it. And then that's what I will cut out so that will allow that little bit of edging to show of the wood that, you know, I paint it or we will paint or whatever. So here they are all cut out and ready for the rest of them. I'm going to use Debbie's Design Diary DIY. Uh, little black dress paint and I'm just going to paint the front and backs of my hearts and again all my other pieces I spray painted those outside with just a flat black paint I usually go for a flat uh, paint look when I'm spray painting I don't really like gloss or semi gloss if I can help it so just showing a little bit of the painting here I think this turned out really cute. Again, we did this at Christmas, but I thought I want to make a Valentine one. And if you didn't see that video, you know, let's show it fresh again. It's the same kind of concept. And for like the pole, you could use like a big round dowel or anything like that. Anything will work. This is just to give you some ideas. And as you can see here, I'm coming in and just distressing around the edges with my sanding block. I got the sanding block at Dollar Tree, just a little light distressing all the way around on all my pieces just so you know that gives it a little rustic look and then i'm coming in with my papers i cut out with my sewing machine i'm going to sew around the edges here i like to do this on all my papers on and all my projects that i work on um, i just think it gives it a nice kind of country look here this finished sewing i use like a size 10 or 11 needle depending on manufacturer and a stitch length of four tension set on four and I sew on it like it's regular fabric and it looks just like this when I'm done a little wonky but I don't care now I'm going to come in with the open end of a pair of scissor blades and I'm just going to scrape along the edges to give it a nice kind of rustic look here the sewing in you know this uh concept here this scraping along the edges it's all just you know if you like it you can do it if not then don't do it sometimes I you know this is what it looks like scraped along the edge and then the one in back not scraped looks perfectly cute either way i'm going to go ahead and get my bottom piece on here and then i'm going to take a long needle and poke through the holes just so the paper doesn't rip too much when we get the screws on and i'm going to go ahead and add the papers to the rest of my pieces here and then what i'll do off camera is because the the spindle's too long to show me screwing it in on camera even though i have my camera pretty high overhead but you know what i'll do is um do ahead and put those screws in off camera. So let's go ahead and get our little uh, papers on our hearts here. I love these wonky hearts. Again, link will be down below, craftingwithkimber.com. I believe it's a set of four, if I am correct. Love these because they stand up on their own. They're made out of half-inch wood. Perfect. Get this last one on. And then this is a free printable I cut it out of vinyl. I will have the link in the description box for you to my blog. Now you can either print this out on paper first and then cut your paper to fit your sign that you're going to use if you don't have a cutting machine. Or of course, I do have an optional PNG file that you can put into your electronic cutting machine uh, program. You're going to have to clean the background and in between the letters, but then you can, you know, cut vinyl out of it. And I do have it where, you know, the XO is in black and the love in the heart is in red for you. Okay, but I made it both options. So you have PDF if you want to print it out onto cardstock or a PNG if you want to use it in your cutting machine. We're going ahead and once that vinyl is on, go ahead and glue this onto my sign. I think it turned out really, really super cute. All right, and I'm going to put this in order and here's off camera where I will screw that in and I'll go ahead and screw in also the little hanger on the side. Now off camera, I'm showing you here, I'm using tiny little eye hooks that I'm going to place at the top of this sign. Now this wood is thin, so you want to make sure that you use eye hooks that have a really tiny, tiny screw area. If it's too big, that wood is going to split. Okay, once I got that in, um, done off camera, we're going to head glue our hearts along the bottom base. I'm just gluing them in so they look like they're a little bit scattered, like, you know, as I've done before, like I just threw some hearts out, you know, so. And these are at Wood X and O. I picked up at Joann's, I believe, a few years ago, already painted black. I didn't have to do anything to them except distress them a little bit. And I'm just kind of adding glue where points of contact are, where some product is going to touch another product to make sure that it glues together. 
but I wanted to add the X and O so it kind of matches with the X and O up at the top, of course. Everything ties in together. And the hearts, because there's a little heart on the sign as well, after the word love. So I just love the colors, pinks, reds, blacks. I like how it turned out. And now I'm going to use this plant hanger from Dollar Tree. I love to use these when I'm hanging these signs. I'll usually use the big hook and a couple of chain links. I'll just grab a few off here. Um, need two, of course, to hang into the eye hooks and determine how many chain links I'm going to need for each side. In the end, I think on the right side, I only needed three chain links. On the left side, I only just needed the hook. And then I'm going to attach that up at the top into the holes on the little plant hanger thing. And that makes this project complete. Let's move on to project number three. For this project, we're going to need, again, another paint stick. And then I've got these. It was a three-piece sign I got at Walmart in the fall. Just any nice kind of rectangular piece of wood will work. And then I'm using, this is a leftover piece from an arrow from Dollar Tree. I cut the ends here. And then I'm going to use, this as a shim. You could use all wood shims if you want because it's easily cuttable. I made like a little arrow out of it. All I did was cut it with some heavy-duty scissors. That was it. So you could totally use just three wood shims is fine. And then this is just a piece that fell off some kind of Christmas sled from Dollar Tree. Easy, easy here as well to cut through. So any like one of those signs from Dollar Tree will work, you can cut into. And then a rectangular piece and this wood hanging piece also from Dollar Tree. And then I've got a little Jenga block piece here. And then this, these are some carrots, wood carrots and bunnies and hearts, tuckums, um, and mini hearts here. I'll have the link down below, craftingwithkimber.com, where you can find these cute little items. So for this little leftover piece from Dollar Tree that's a wood sign, I'm just going to use the other arrow and trace it and then I'm just using some scissors to cut it so any of those paper pressed wood signs from Dollar Tree work are great I just use these because I had them and they're ready to go okay but again you could use a foam board for these just something to make arrows out of you could use ready-made arrows from Dollar Tree whatever works for you and for this part you know you could use foam board here of course or some other wood piece from Dollar Tree and just something on the bottom to do like a double layer with Okay, I hope you're liking these projects today because the first one was like everyday decor, right? The second one was a Valentine project and now we're moving on to Easter. So I'm just placing my arrows kind of where I want them on the paint stick and the thing I'm going to use for the sign so I can figure out how much of the paint stick I want to cut off. And I left about 14 inches here. Okay, so now I'm going to start wood gluing our little sign post together. I'm using this Jenga block on the back of the paint stick to give us extra gluing surface. I'm going to use this piece here to kind of level it out. Extra gluing surface. And then I'm going to clamp it together once it's level at the bottom. And then I'm going to take my smaller piece and larger piece of wood, also from Dollar Tree. That big rectangular wood, that's the one that comes in the six pack in the, you know, craft or square section. And you don't have to double it. I just like to do that. And then I'll clamp those together. And then once they're set, I'm going to go ahead and add wood glue to the bottom of my little Jenga piece and paint stick here and center it in the middle of my double base down here and let that set up. Now I'm going to use some mud paint here in Manor White. It's just a chalk paint. I just get it here locally. I'm going to use the same brand in Blush. Use a few different colors here. I'm going to use this in Sage. 
same thing. And then I am going to use uh, Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color terracotta. And these are the colors of papers I've picked to choose to kind of go with the paints. So first thing I'm going to do is basically the whole sign, the arrows, the base, everything I'm just going to paint in that manner white. It's just going to be a white shade all the way around. And I'll be covering the front of this sign and the fronts of the arrow with some of the scrapbook paper. So I do two coats of that. And working now here on the base, just painting it all around. So whatever color you want to do your whole uh, sign post in. And then I'm going to start using that blush pink on the bunny. These are so cute bunny tuckums. There's actually two designs here. I pull up another design to show you. And again, I'll have the links down below for the bunnies and carrots and hearts. Here's the other one you get. So you get one kind of standing up and one, you know, kind of sitting sideways. And they're about two and a half inches tall. And the carrots, about the same thing. And there are different sizes. I believe there's a one and a half inch, two inch, and two and a half inch in these designs here. And I over to the left, you see the bigger hearts and the smaller hearts because I wasn't sure... Um, what size hearts I use. I end up with the little mini ones here that I'm painting now. Now for the paint, I mix that terracotta and some of that manor white together, and you can see I matched it pretty good to the paper just to lighten that terracotta up a little bit because it was just a little bit too orange. And so the colors I chose I think are nice because they're kind of a nice vintage shades here. I think works out. So we're just painting the bottom of our carrots, of course, just painting a little bit of everything so you get the gist of you know what I'm doing here. I love how these little carrots turned out. They're so cute. And then I'm going to go ahead with that green and paint the top of our carrots. That'll match them with our papers. And I'm going to use this little stylus from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to go in the regular terracotta paint now. And I'm just going to add some little dots on our carrots. So it's kind of like tone on tone a little bit. Same shade, but just a slight darker. So the dots are there, but not in your face. But we get a little texture on our carrots. I think they look really cute. And that looks so cute. Oh, I love these. And then I'm just coming in with some watered down that Manor White paint and a little skinny brush here and just adding some little shading lines on the greenery area just to, again, give it a little bit of, you know, uh, difference here and give it a little bit of shading. Looks super cute. And I'm going to take that same watered down paint, add some splatters to the, the bunnies and the hearts or bunny and hearts. Only use one bunny here. Perfect. And now I'm going to just start cutting down the paper to fit the front of my sign and to fit the front of the arrows. And I'm cutting them all about a quarter inch short all the way around so that you see the area where we painted and stuff, of course, just like we did on our sign project, our hanging sign, our Valentine project, just like that. Okay, and I'll just do one little arrow here. Perfect. I'm going to pull it up a little bit so I can mark on the back where to cut it off. And then once I put it back on the arrow, it should fit perfectly. Just like that. And we'll just kind of finish up the other two a little bit here. Two more arrows to go. Wonderful. And last one. At first, I wasn't sure I was going to like how this turned out, but once we got all the cute little, you know, splatters and everything on it, it looks cute. So there's everything all cut out and ready to go. And what I'm going to do is just sand everything here. It's all distressed. I just sanded it off camera, just real light distress, distressing. And look, I sanded the little carrots and bunnies. Isn't that so cute? I just want to sleep with it. It's so cute. <laughs> anyway, now I'm coming in and just sewing around my papers and stuff, just like we did in the Valentine project, just like I do in every project I use paper on. Again, your choice. If you want to do any sewing or anything like that on it, you don't have to. You could do fake sewing. You can take like a fine tip Sharpie marker and make little dash lines all the way around. There's also stamps in the store if you go into scrapbooking section here's what it looks like there's stamps that are look like stitch lines in ink and you can ink the stamp and then stamp onto your project those little stitch lines okay and just coming around here and just distressing around the edges how I like to do if you're not a sewer and you want some texture scraping around the edges here definitely adds that brings that dimension into it and it's really easy and very inexpensive to do <laughs> Perfect. 
All right, now what I'm gonna do is use my Beacon Fabri-Tac glue and I'm going to get these si this sign and these arrows into position where I want them to be and I'll just clamp that uh, one down and then I'll get the other arrows on and I'll go ahead and clamp those down as well. And I just set, let them set for you know 10, 15 minutes because I'm using kind of really thick glue here and I want it to set really well. And again, that Beacon Fabri-Tac glue holds wonderfully. One more. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Now, I cut this out in vinyl. Again, you know, I'm not going to leave you hanging. I do have a free printable for you. So if you don't have a cutting machine, again, you can just run this, the PDF through your printer onto some card stock paper or printed paper and then cut those out to fit your arrows and sign. Or if you have a cutting machine, use the PNG file and just clean out the background and in between the letters and, you know, cut it out of vinyl. Perfect. I like how these turned out. Bunny Trail Carrot Patch and Hop To It Cafe. I think that's really cute. All right, got that off. Now I'm going to go ahead and use some of that watered down paint we used earlier and add some splatters on here. Just thought it was looking a little bit too plain on the papers. And that way it'll kind of match the bunnies. And then the, just the, the starkness of that it's kind of an off-white paint was just there wasn't it needed something so I'm just taking that stylus tool and dipping it into pink paint and just adding little dots down that you know paint stick and then I'll add some onto the base as well just to give it something I think it just finishes off I could have done splatter but I think that was just a little bit too much I wanted it to look more whimsical and perfectly placed like on the carrots and then we're going to go ahead and start gluing our papers down onto the main sign and the arrows of course now it's all starting to fit together really liking how this turned out wonderful and then i'm just point of contact just like we did on the valentine sign wherever the bunnies and the carrots are going to lay that's where i'm adding the beacon fabric tack glue Perfect. And I, what I love about these wood cutouts is these are done on quarter inch wood, I believe. So they do sit up nicely. And just kind of leaning the, see, I went with the little mini hearts, leaning things in. I changed my view a little bit. I know it might be a little bit hard to see, but I think I've got it up close zoomed for you. And just laying down the carrots, three carrots, you know, set of three. Perfect. And I'm going to glue down the last little mini heart. And that makes this project complete. So I hope you enjoyed all of these projects today. I thought it was fun to just mix it up a little bit. You know, Valentine's is coming, spring is on the horizon, throw in a little bit of everyday decor. So I hope you enjoyed that too. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which project was your favorite. Please give this video a thumbs up. It really does help get my channel out there and help get it to grow and share it if you wanna share it to, you know, other fellow crafters around. And if you're just checking things out, you walked in here for the first time and you're digging what you saw, make sure before you click off, you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. Whatever trial you're going through in life, you don't expect the fires. In spite of all that you try and do to water down the situation, the fires still often flame, adding more stress and damage to the situation. You feel the numbness, the hurt, the pain. You don't know how to react to the situation. You seem to just be. Hoping that in there somewhere, God will show up while you're waiting as the flames are getting higher and higher. You're hoping he'll show his face soon and lead you down the path to victory. It's been a long time coming and time stands still as you wait. Just know that in the numbness of it all, God is always in the middle of your trial. He will give you a plan of action at just the right time to help you find the breakthrough you need. He will provide all the help that is needed in your situation, often through his word, a prayer, a friend, a support system. You must trust his plan to get you where you need to be. Don't allow the numbness you feel to paralyze any hope that God has waiting for you. Trust his guidance and trust his judgment to get you through. Trust in what lies ahead of you because God placed it there a fork in the road, a divergent path, a new walk to get you to the right place of healing. Don't let the trial overwhelm you. Don't let the fear claim you. Don't let the flames burn you up. 
You'll get through this. It may not be easy and the road might be long, but trust that you will not be alone through any of it. Believe that God will not fail you. He loves you and has high ambitions for your life to use you for good and to give you the best possible future. Trust in that. Trust that God will do whatever he can to make good in your trial of flames. He will water down your situation and make all things new. He wants nothing but the best of what he has to offer for the child he loves. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.